segment two, Golden Black Live. Uh, we put the mobile devices down. Brian got it down in time, just just ready, <laughs> ready, ready to go. I don't know how I don't know how we function without these things. Tom Deanhart joins us. Uh, he's been doing some freelance work, uh, important work for Purdue Purdue Athletics, and bringing his expertise. And uh, as a uh, long time, you know, your, your days at Sporting News, B, BTN on down the line. Uh, uh, this is home for you, obviously West Lafayette, yeah. and being around Purdue. Uh, how, how fun has that been? Just uh, being close to this to this program, and even though a disappointing loss last night. Yeah, you know that, Alan. Very close uh, and dear to me is West Lafayette and the community of Purdue, of course. Um, I've known you since 1985. Sorry met, to hear that. <laughs> that's okay. Met, uh, as a student, and you've thrived <laughs> at, instead of that. That's good. Go I'm ahead. A Purdue Sports Information Office. Right. I still remember going on the bus trips with you with the uh, three amigos to some exhibitions. Those were some great exhibitions, and the food was good. After it was good. Yeah. Went to Anderson, went to Kip. Spoken like a true media people. That's what we, we went mean. to Kip Jones High School. But yeah, yeah. It's, as, as a lot of people know, um, yeah, my roots are here, and uh, to have a chance to be around Purdue is always special. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the opportunity from Michael Bensky um, has, has been, you know, very much appreciated to be able to write for the PurdueSports.com website. As you know, there's the new Forge magazine, yeah. which is run by the athletic department. I had, the, I guess, the anchor feature in the inaugural issue for that on, yeah. on Brahm. So writing for that. You did a good job with it. And then, of course, the, uh, the social media um, video. And then we may incorporate some audio. We're just kind of playing everything by ear. Long story short, the whole social media, uh, the degree with which they're using it now is, 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 is relatively new at Purdue. They're, they're, they're trying to expand it. So um, it's kind of fun to be a part of that. Yeah, no question. And, and you have a, a game last night. Uh, Brian's been around a long time. You've been around longer. Has there been anything close? I mean, we're going, going back to the scratching our heads to best first game performances and I'll ask mm. both of you but this wow. obviously takes the cake because it was the best performance of all time at least in one category but uh, scratch your you know if we go back to most ballyhooed might have been Jeff George in 1986 yeah. Yeah. but just, he did not have a good game necessarily his first game against Ball State but uh, anything else that's close? I may have one right. um, he wasn't a freshman but he had played very sparingly up to the point to winning the starting job. Going back to uh, 1984, yeah, Jim, Jim Everett yeah, in fair. the Hoosier Dome against uh, Notre Dame. Purdue was a heavy underdog against Jerry Faust, fighting Irish. And Everett, there was no sense that he was going to be the starter. Yeah. He was in a very heated battle with Doug Downing Doug and Downing. Jeff Huber as well. Yeah. And uh, Jim Everett won it. Lo and behold, Purdue treks down to the brand new Hoosier Dome, yeah. the dedication game, and heavy underdogs, and Purdue beat the Fighting Irish to begin a, a magical season, much like 1997, uh, where Purdue beat Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Michigan, and Alan, you know, yeah. it's done, the only never time that's ever happened since. in one season. So Jim Everett's debut um, got a glimpse of what he was to become. 1985 was his last year, and then, of course, he was the number three pick in the NFL draft, and uh, he had a very nice NFL career. Yeah. And he tweeted about Rondale Moore last night, so he was Did excited. He? Brian, anything? I mean, you know, we talked about Dorian Bryant in game one didn't have mm. that type of deal. I don't remember. Deal, but, but I don't remember is, yesterday. <laughs> but I just think you look at the, you know, it was just so unbelievable uh, in terms of uh, the effort on, on what he brought to the table and how he did it. All, you know, almost broke the record in the first half is just uh, just astounding. You've been around him a little bit, and as as Brian, but what do you what do you like about his personality in terms of what makes him tick in your view? You know, just listening, to you guys offset, and and uh, I think hearing Matt's story, uh, he's uh, not just a great player, but seems like a better person, uh, very humble person for somebody so young, yeah. somebody who's had such a bright spotlight on him at an early age. Um, hard not to get a big head and have a big ego and make it all about you. So uh, that's that's something that's really struck me about a kid that young and that talented. Yeah. And so much so fast, and it's, now we have so much so fast again for him. 313 all-purpose yards yeah. last night. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, so I, th I think, yeah, we all knew about the on-field skills, the potential there, but to see a little bit of his personality and to see what he's like as a person makes it even better. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. his his personality is, uh, at least around us, is the opposite of what his playing style is. I mean, he plays football like a Mountain Dew commercial, yeah. basically. I mean, he plays it at, at, at a different speed. Uh, you could almost audibly, in the stadium, That's what I was gonna say. Go ahead. hear everybody, <gasps> Every time he touches the ball, and I don't know how I'd even spell that if I wanted to write that. But, you're you're going to write it someday um, and figure it out, I'm sure. And then it's in his post game. You know, he a lot of freshmen would have lost their minds. They would have been freaking out about how awesome they were. Um, a lot of freshmen would have freaked out after they dropped their first college pass, and yeah. then dropped everyone after that. He just he's so poised. He's so such an adult already. It feels like. Uh, carries himself so well, presents himself so well. Everything he said after that game yesterday was like somebody, a PR professional, had handed them Mm -hmm. a script. Here is what you say to come off looking as good as you possibly can in this situation. Don't brag. Don't act like you're even impressed with yourself. Talk about trading the stats for the win. And he hit all those boxes last night. And you just you can't say enough about... The ability as a player, but also the way he carries himself, the presentation. Yeah. The, I in the audible, I guess it's an audible gasp. But you heard, I, I've heard that, and I've been going to games since maybe a few years longer than Tom, because I'm older than Tom. <laughs> Leroy Keys uh, had that sound when he had the ball. The place just didn't know what to do. I mean, it, there was that, oh my gosh, he's going to do something. And when he made that cut on his first yeah. first yeah. play, I had not heard that sound. I mean, there's been others. A, a, uh, Tom will remember Jimmy Smith had mm-hmm. that ability for a while. Dorian Bryan had some mm-hmm. of that build, ability Vinny without question. Vinny Sutherland had that year. ability. Uh, no question. That, that may be the closest, most recent one is that, that sound that you heard when Sutherland got the, got the uh, bubble screen uh, in 1997 on a regular basis. But it was just, uh, just off the charts in terms, of, uh, in terms of that. Okay, we've all been watching – football a long time and teams a long time where does Purdue go from here what is what is it now you know it's all is not lost it's a long season Jeff Brom seemed to take that part of the yeah. stride but what's yeah, next? yeah you never want to overreact positively or negatively I always think things are never as good as you think and they're as bad as you yeah. think I was thinking about that walking walking back after the game last night the first four games of the year we talked about all at home mm-hmm. You've got your MAC team next, and then you've got Missouri and Boston College. A lot of people were thinking maybe 4-0. Oh, wow, what if it was 4-0? Oh? Yeah. Well, now they're 0-1, and you like to think next week they can take care of business. That leaves you with the two big ones. Again, Missouri's got a uh, Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback. They're very much like Purdue. They've got a terrific offense and a defense that has questions. And there's BC with the big-time running back. Right. So. Yeah, I don't know where they go from here. I think there were encouraging things. You guys talked about those earlier. Um, the defense did its part. I looked at the play-by-play last night. Two times in the fourth quarter, the defense got the offense the ball right. with the chance to go ahead. Right. Yeah. Right. Two times the offense went three and out. Right. Yeah. And I know there were issues in the first half. We all knew there were going to be issues on the defense. There right. were going to be missed tackles, mm-hmm. you know, some missed assignments. There were going to be growing pains. But to see how that unit adjusted against a pretty good Northwestern mm-hmm. offense. If you remember last year, Purdue only ran for 40 yards yeah, 40 against the Wildcats, 1.6 yards right. per yeah. carry. So, again, um, it was a good – people got to remember, that's a good Northwestern team. Maybe better than the Louisville team last year that, that beat mm-hmm. Purdue in the opener. Yeah, so, point. you don't want to overreact. Give, give, you always give the opponent credit. Um, but I think there's a lot of positives, beginning with the defense. I think, you know, we talked a little bit too early about the quarterback situation. Um that, that'll play. I, I've got the utmost confidence in Jeff Brom getting things figured out offensively. So uh, long story short, no need to jump off any bridges. Um, <laughs> That's what our business is all about. <laughs> <laughs> Over, overreacting. you got to overreact, overstate, make that crazy statement that's going to get attention. So it's going to be fun. By the end of, well, I guess a month from now, right, um, I, you know, Purdue's got a good shot to be 3-1. Who can tell me the last time Northwestern lost a football game? Yeah. yeah. October um, 7th of last year. Purdue lost a four-point game at home to a team that hasn't lost since last October. And has Early a last back. October. Yeah. And it made every mistake you could possibly yeah. – maybe not every mistake you could possibly make, but th- at least three egregious, game-changing 
mistakes that you have to figure are aberrations. The, the mistakes that Elijah Sindel are yesterday, there's no precedent for this with him. This is not what he is. This is not what he's been. You have to look at this like when he gets his chance again, and he will, th that is not his normal. Um, the defense was bad in the first half, was good in the second half. Again, if something transformed, this loss might look like it had some value here in a couple weeks. Had it been the other way around, had it been a, a good first half and a bad second half, maybe you'd think it uh, a little bit different. But you look at it now like, well, th these guys obviously had to get some things out of their system right away. This is a game that I think if you open with somebody else and then play this in week two, Purdue probably wins this football game. That's a huge if, obviously, completely something that cannot be supported with fact. Yeah. It's completely subjective. But what my point in all of this is that Purdue's going to be fine. I mean, if Purdue plays that exact same football game, again, against Boston College, against Missouri, against whoever, doesn't throw two egregious interceptions that by a player who knows better and has never done that before in his career. Uh, again, I'll repeat, Elijah Sindelar's issues last night were David Blau's issues yeah, yeah. at this time a year ago. And the reason, a lot, in large part, the reason Elijah Sindelar, well, a broken ankle had a lot to do with it too. <laughs> but why Elijah Sindelar maybe had this job in the first place. But... A lot of good stuff happened last night between the mistakes. Mm -hmm. And if that good stuff endures and Purdue cuts out the all the shrapnel in its foot, its feet, Purdue's going to be fine. They're going to win. The, the win total is going to take care of itself. They're going to get um, you know, a, a respectable amount of wins because they showed last night that last year was no fluke, that – there are some things at the grassroots level in this program that are pretty good and can make this a very competitive team this year. If you ask me, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're asking. Tom, you had a chance, obviously, for the first issue of Forbes to spend a great deal of time with with mm -hmm. Jeff Brown. I've been around him uh, during this process. What's his medal? I mean, we we talked about how he brings things to the table, has a stabilizing but emotional influence. Uh, you've been around a lot of coaches over the years. What what do we? How does he handle situations like this, in your view? Well, I tell you, the, the one thing, a couple words pop in my head when I first have the, the name Jeff Brom presented to me. It's tough, tough, toughness and, and passion. Uh, those are two things that, that really resonate to me with Brom. Uh, he's a smart coach as well. And uh, those three components, I think, are, are big reasons why he's uh, – he is as good as he is. It was interesting, guys. Uh, I was here for, in earlier this month in August, I went to one of those controlled scrimmages mm -hmm. you know, that was closed, and they had referees there. Mm -hmm. And you should have seen him get after the referees yeah. just in a controlled scrimmage. Yeah. It was like a game environment. I mean, he was full bore Saturday afternoon in October yeah. form. So that was a little snapshot of his competitiveness and intensity just in that setting right there. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty fortunate to have him. Uh, just talking to him again on Friday before the game. Um, you can tell he's got a chip on his shoulder. Uh, his overall personality, we've, we've talked about this too, is being fit for Purdue in this mm -hmm. campus. Um, certainly not a blue blood, always battling uphill. And I think Jeff Brom cherishes that and likes, likes kind of being an underdog. And uh, I tell you what, I think Purdue's lucky to have a coach with that personality who's, uh, who's a fit on so many other levels. Well, that story will yeah. continue to unfold uh, as we go through uh, weeks 2 through 12 uh, of the, this football season. Well, Tom, I want to thank uh, you for uh, stopping by, and we'll look forward to your work on PurdueSports.com and through social media as well. And, and Brian, we always thank you for stopping by, <laughs> only because you kind of have to. Thank you for paying me. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I think that's I'm all paid, just yeah. my stock response. Thank you for paying me. Checks, checks I haven't bounced lately. <laughs> Whatever you want me to do, <laughs> yeah. within reason, I will do. Because all right, we'll, we'll take too. a two-minute break and bring in uh, Lee DeLeon and have a little talk about uh, his role in Purdue Athletics and obviously a new newcomer that uh, had his first Purdue football experience last night as well. So we'll look forward to that in our final segment of Golden Black Live. Stay tuned.